feel like AI just evolves so, so quickly. And so I guess I'm less interested in necessarily the technical elements of AI, but I'm intensely interested around the guest experience and kind of what is the biggest opportunity? You're so close to, I mean, literally your job title is strategy innovation <laughs> and you're like an operation. So you're on the forefront of all of this. And a lot of the people I talk with are either over indexed on one of these areas. So I feel like you span a lot, you see a lot of hotels. I guess my question for you is, you know, we're recording this in the middle of 2024. Where do you believe the biggest opportunities lie in terms of improving guest experience? Is it a technological solution? Is it more of a people solution? I'm curious what you're seeing or yeah, hearing. I love that question because as much as AI is in the forefront and as fast as it's advancing, you know, hiring people with the right DNA, training them, we talk about that psychic hick. That's what our hospitality industry is, service. Like that, you know, that giving back to others or that thing that made that you know, family's kid light up, they lost, you know, left their teddy bear and somebody was able to do it. Or, you know, those little things are what um, really light us up. And, and, you know, human connection, we, we talked about enabling people, even if it's not directly us, to have that experience and to be able to be their best selves, whether they're on a business trip, whether they're, you know, family, resort, etc. So I think, I think, like, there are things that are true. We, I think we've talked in the past, there's this bifurcation in the industry between what I described as kind of experience and real hospitality versus accommodation. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, real estate play, something that's like a place to crash, you're probably having a good enough experience, but like it's around it. It's because I'm there visiting family and maybe we're sitting in the lobby of a hotel, but you're probably not feeling like experiential about some of those cases where I come in late at night, I've got a business meeting in the morning, I crash and, you know, and I'm not sure the hotel should try to overly do that. I do think that, you know, there are ways that AI, we've talked about it being on the productivity side, but that's where I feel like there's a lot of time consuming administrative stuff, whether that's, um, you know, you know, back of house in a lot of ways that by freeing that up frees up resource and time to focus more on the guests and the guest experience and more on how do I just engage with folks because I'm not uh, stuck behind a computer or I'm not pulling numbers and analyzing it. And I think that is where I think over a five to 10 year period of time, it's going to happen sooner. <laughs> But I think it's, you know, arcs of time when you have a critical mass that enable a hotel to operate where a lot of the things that um, really aren't adding value even to the business and are just like, hey, could I as a generalist say, can you pull the sales figures here and put a spreadsheet that overlays it with occupancy rates and guests at? And can you put that in a chart in PowerPoint and basically having that like as simple as that created? Correct. Instead of pulling numbers, lags, pouring over spreadsheets. For Travel Guide, we have uh, one of our, you know, younger, you know, leaders, um, woman named, you know, Lila is taking data that's in different formats of different documents and forget about pivot tables or even having to extract it or something's in a PDF and using Gen AI simply to shave hours and pull data together faster in ways to be able to put it in a position to drive insight. So as much as AI and the guest experience, like I, again, as somebody that loves innovation and is excited about the opportunity of AI, I think a lot of it is back of house. There are some things, for example, in the short term rental space, a player that bubbles up as you're looking at uh, different places. Hey, this is the good things like Amazon reviews. These are positive comments. By the way, this is on the second floor. So if you have challenges with mobility, probably not the right one for you. And it's above a bar. So if you're a light sleeper, you go to bed early, probably not. But otherwise, it's a great location, amazing. It's, so that degree from a customer standpoint to create better match of like what I'm looking for, I think that's going to happen over time. Um, but it's not overnight. And then the other thing, like travel advisors, agents, uh, Amex, uh, I think GBT shared an example as well. Both of these at Skiff's AI and data conference, you know, I talked to Rafat about it where, you know, agents have to scroll through these long, long screens. Somebody's trying to, well, what's the cancellation policy or what's, you know, what it is. So the, the AI that they've been able to bring up that is understanding what's happening in the conversation and immediately summarizing just the key information and even as somebody's having a conversation, being able to highlight based on what's being asked, what information should be right in front of the agent um, or the advisor that's looking at that, 
you know, that's a huge productivity. That's also for the person that's working there. Nobody wants to be like scraping through, you know, 20 pages to try to find like some key terms. And then when they ask a different question, right? So I think um, that's still the area. And I, I'd ask you, because you've interviewed a lot of people. I'm curious, like, have you come across a lot of people that are saying like, it, it's been a short period of time too, you know, a year or three years from now, but have you seen or heard something that we were like, wow, that's really cool? Yeah. And well, I, um, I, I agree with the, the piece you mentioned, all, well, all three points you mentioned, the piece around back office or um, back of house processes becoming faster makes sense. I'm trying to get into the details of like, what does that mean specifically? I was talking to Ernest Lee, who's the chief commercial yeah. officer at Citizen M yesterday, yeah. and he was, he was giving me some examples. One of them were um, uh, kind of, uh, is it robotic process automation? Yeah, RPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. RPA. Yeah, so it was something to the effect of, you know, he had these pe- people on his team that were matching email addresses with reservations, yeah. took hours and hours. So I like that. It was a very specific use case. It's like, what takes hours? And my takeaway from that was, okay, you have to kind of almost like audit yourself and your workflow and think about what what's taking ta- time either for myself or my team, what could be uh, answered there. But just to piggyback on what you said with your team and your organization, the person on your team that is um, doesn't have to do pivot tables and is coming up with you know insights, it seems that the skill to develop now is kind of, you have to think about what questions you're going to ask, right? Because you can get answers to anything, but it begs the question to ask. So it seems like this person on your team, you, your colleagues are thinking about, okay, you know, what insights do we need to move things forward? Well, you answered it, um, whether you realize it or not, in, 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 you know, your own comments right there, which is, you know, the, the, you don't have to map the entire organization. You can just ask people and like people know they're like, yeah, here are the 10 things that it like take the most time and are frustrating. Okay. Which one of those, like pick one that seems like is the intersection of most consistently repetitive, less kind of variability of like there are 40 permutations of it. Well, it's kind of the same thing. Amgen, A-M-G-I-N-E is uh, an example of a company in the TMC space that's automating like almost by email bookings and rebookings. Terry Jones took over chairman of it. And it's a good example of, of that, but you don't need to like, you know, have a hundred things, take, take the top 10, the top five listed out and just start with one, right. And learn and apply, you know, the example in, in, in our space, another one, and, and, and you'd use the example of uh, citizen M for them. That might be one of the pain points for another. It might be, you know what, we've got tons of supplier agreements Hey, can we uh, can we do it? So we say um, for this new supplier agreement, here's the basic information. Look at these five agreements and create a new one. And by the way, there's no cross currency effect. Take anything out that's related to that, and let's add this clause in and make it mutual. And then review a 95% solution. I think that's the thing. It's a human in the loop with a starting point of an 80, a 90, 95% solution. And even if you start with like, hey, we can only do 10% of these today. Okay, like it's it's not like you're being graded on an exam. That that's better. And and the next time you can say, well, what's the next five percent or the next task? So I think sometimes um, just being able to to list it quickly and get a sense of yeah, like this has taken thirty forty percent of our time. Is there a better way? 